I've got nine tips to help you finish your indie game coming up. What's up guys, my name is Tim Russwick, and if you're new here, I want you to consider subscribing because we post daily game development content just like this, and I think you should see it. Before we get started, why don't you go ahead and leave your top tip for finishing games down in the comments below. So the tips that we're about to talk about are all tips that I've had to learn the hard way, you know, working in software, working in startups, uh, building games over the last several years, uh, but especially in the last two years. I've made 15 games total, and 12 of them were last year, so I learned a lot, kind of like a crash course. Uh, in how to finish games and I thought I would share some of my tips with you guys. So getting into it, tip number one is be consistent. So I know this sounds like cliche advice. I know you're going tip. We read this in every article, in every blog post, in every dev log. It comes up on Reddit all the time. I know, I know. But there's a reason why this is tip number one because consistency is the only way to continually move forward. And it is something that I haven't been able to do most of my life. And it was the reason that I didn't finish a lot of things. I would get really excited about something. I would start it. I would go full on into it. And then I'd stop. And then I'd get excited about something else and do the same thing and repeat that. And I've repeated that for years. And for a long time, I didn't finish my projects. And so it took me realizing that oh my God, I don't finish anything that I start to really like buckle down and, and actually start finishing things. And the consistency is how I did that. Being consistent and working on it every day or every week or every month, uh, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be daily. Uh, I think it should be daily, at least, you know, a couple times a week, but you should schedule the time that you're going to do it. It doesn't have to be like, if you have time, you could just say, okay, I'm going to work a little bit every day. Uh, if you work better with schedules, say, okay, I'm going to work every day from 5 PM to 8 PM when I get home from work or whatever it is, but just being consistent and keeping it part of your schedule, even when you don't feel like it, that's a big point. Sometimes I don't feel like working on my game, right? Sometimes I'm just not motivated. I feel down. I don't feel like inspired but I make myself sit down and work on my stuff. And sometimes I'll just tell myself, hey, I just, I wanna be consistent and I gotta work on my stuff for 10 minutes. That's all I gotta do, just 10 minutes. And by telling myself that usually I work the 10 minutes and then I get into it and then I wanna work an hour or two. Uh, sometimes I don't, sometimes I only wanna work the 10 minutes and that's totally cool, but it allows me to continually move forward every single day and, and eventually it helps me finish my stuff. So tip number two is plan your downtime. So it goes along with consistency, right? Like there's these two opposing ideas. One is be consistent and work on it every single day. The other is don't work on it every day because you're gonna burn yourself out. So how do you balance being consistent and taking time off? And the way that I do that is I plan my downtime. So I might plan a week off that I'm gonna take off from my project. I might plan you know, some, some clarity time to, to regenerate my brain. I might say, you know, Tuesday and Thursday, I don't work on any game projects. Um, I know I have people in the uh, game dev underground elite that like don't work on weekends, stuff like that. Basically you want to plan downtime because downtime is really, really important. And I know in the early parts of the project, it's super, super hard to not work on something you're super excited about. And then in the later stages of the project, it's super, super hard to work on this stuff because it gets tiring and and crazy. So you gotta have you gotta plan the downtime to kind of even out that uh, that trajectory. And when you plan it out, I think it makes it better because then you don't feel guilty for not working. There, you know, problems don't come up where you're beating yourself up because you didn't work one day or something like that. And and I think planning for me is really kind of helped me step into the next zone where. I'm not constantly like talking negative to myself because I wasn't able to stay consistent. I was able to stay consistent because I planned my downtime. Planning the downtime was part of the consistency, if that makes sense. So tip number three is build to ship. Now what this means is you wanna build a game with the intention to ship it, with the intention to publish it, with the intention to put it up on Steam or Xbox or Nintendo Switch or whatever it is. It sounds simple. It sounds super simple. Like, yeah, well, why wouldn't I finish my game? Why wouldn't I build the ship? Like, of course. But a lot of people I know, a lot of people in Game Dev Underground, they say, Tim, I'm working on a game. I say, cool. What platform is it going to be? When's it coming out? Oh, I don't know. They haven't, they haven't thought that far. 
right? And there's there's nothing wrong with necessarily not thinking that far, but if you're not thinking about shipping, if you're not thinking about publishing, if you're not thinking about launch day, you can get lost, man. And especially when it comes to finishing, it is a lot harder to finish something that is that open-ended, that all of the possibilities from the entire universe exist behind that curtain. You don't want that. You want to build the ship. You want to build from day one with the intention to push it out the door. And sometimes you put a time limit on yourself, three months, six months, a year, whatever it is. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you work milestone based. Like I'm going to have the prototype done in a month. I'm going to have the vertical slice done in three months. I'm going to have whatever. But you just want to build to ship and everything that you think of along the way, you want to make sure that it kind of fits in that plan of actually shipping the game. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like a paid game on Steam or Xbox or something official like that. It could just be putting it up on Congregate or Itch or one of these other websites. Having that intention to push the game out there, for me, it was a big turning point because I really started thinking about like when I'm working on the project, okay, this is how it's going to look on someone else's screen when I publish it versus just it's a game that I'm building. So tip number four is be patient. Games take a long time to build. Uh, and even when something goes generally quickly, like if you think of a game jam scenario, you have a weekend to make a game, we can get a lot done in a weekend and you build the whole basics of the game. But if you've ever continued a game jam project from its early stages, it may take three days to build initially, but it can take years to add all the content and to polish stuff and to, uh, really go and make, make that into a proper game. Rami Ismail from Vlambeer. Uh, always says that however days, however many days it takes him to build the initial prototype, that's how many years it'll take him to make the game. And he's done that. Like Nuclear Throne, that game started as like a little uh, game jam project. And they it actually took them two, three years to kind of finish and polish it out. So just keep that in mind. And you got to be patient about this stuff. You have to wait. You have to there is a lot of dark work, like work that you'll be working on for weeks or months that you won't see any visual improvement in the game. There's a lot of stuff that is going to be rough that you have to just kind of carry through. There's a lot of stuff that's not going to be fun. It's not going to be interesting. And you got to be patient. Sometimes stuff's not going to work. Sometimes bugs are going to come up. I've just realized like every time I've been frustrated and I felt like I want to quit, uh, and I just don't want to do this stuff anymore. I feel like it comes from a lack of patience. My expectation is this game should be ready. This game should be done. This game should be out already. But the reality is it's not ready. It's not done. It's not out. Uh, and that just comes from a lack of patience, I think. Tip number five, focus on things that matter. When I work on my games, I like to start, I build, I add some cool stuff. I, I don't really have a plan in mind. I don't have a design document usually. I just kind of build stuff and I add features and I'm like, oh, that would be cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. And you just end up on this weird, crazy trail, right? And sometimes you can focus on the wrong things. Sometimes you can end up focusing on specific features or you can end up focusing on uh, polishing little details. Or you can focus on things that don't move the game forward. And in the beginning stages, at least, you always want to have a game that's playable like the first thing that you should build is the playable game and it starts with a prototype but then it can move on to like a full scale uh game that's just not polished right for me there's so many times where i built lots and lots of stuff i would spend weeks or months working on something and i didn't have anything playable because i was focusing on building all these functions and these systems and and all this stuff and in the end i got so lost building the technology that sometimes i would get discouraged and not even want to make the game and i feel like a lot of developers do that when they should be focusing on the core experience they should be focusing on the game they should be focusing on having like a a testable version right like at all times so that if someone asks you hey can i play it or you you need to get feedback because you should be getting feedback you can give it to them at any point in the development. You want to make sure you have that core chunk done uh, that you can iterate on and just add to. So there's always like a, a playable build. Focusing on like refactoring or changing stuff a little too early can really stop you from finishing a game. Uh, and in my experience, it stopped me a lot, like especially building additional technology or building functions to do things that I thought I needed to do down the line. Uh, without actually having a playable version of it, like in the game, it just, it didn't work out. And it, it stopped me from finishing a lot of projects. Tip number six, don't restart the project because you learn things. Now, 
I want to point out that if you're completely new to game development and you've never built a game before, your first couple of games, you're going to learn a ton and you're going to want to restart most of the time. And I think that's okay when you're super new. But once you've been building games for a while, like this is one of those things like that can stop you from finishing a game. I was working on a game called Black Rim, which was pretty similar to FTL. And I rebuilt the game three different times. And I spent a month or two on each rebuild because the game changed so much. And the game would change and I'd just be like, oh, this code is clunky. It doesn't work. So let me just rebuild it completely. I should have just continued on the original source. In fact, when I got to the third version, I kind of looked back at the first version. And I was like, oh, I kind of like how that looks and how that works. And so it was just my brain playing tricks on me. I really, I should not have started over because I know that like, especially from a technical complexity perspective, the more you work on something, the more complex it gets. And I know it gets to a point where sometimes it's kind of hard to wrap your head around, especially if you're a solo developer, you're looking at all your code, you're looking at all the big systems and everything that connects together. And it just gets kind of less fun. It gets a little intimidating. It gets a little overwhelming. A lot of us, myself included, like to restart the project at that point because we feel like it'll make things easier. Like we can build things better. We can build things more effective. And while that might be true, it stops us from the end goal, which I think is finishing. There are definitely situations when you may want to restart, right? But for the majority of the time that I did it, it was a mistake and it was something that I should not have done. Tip number seven, don't get stuck in perfectionism. So perfectionism is where you end up in those endless tweak cycles, right? And you could be working on animation over and over and over again. You could try to tweak every little last movement of the limb over and over, just making it perfect. And, and while yes, it may make the animation better, there's a point where you get diminishing returns. There's a point at which making that animation any better is not gonna allow anybody to notice and it's all it's gonna do is waste your time. And so if you get stuck in that perfectionism loop where you wanna just like tweak things over and over, not only can you end up like straight up wasting your time, but you can actually make things worse because when you go down that rabbit hole and you get lost in perfectionism and you end up tweaking things over and over, you lose clarity. And when you lose clarity, you end up not knowing what's good or what's bad. And then you end up making changes to it. And I know because I'm speaking from experience, there's so many times where like I got stuck in that perfectionism loop where I would just tweak things endlessly, level design, characters, assets, code, everything. I would end up refactoring code over and over again, uh, doing stuff to just eke a little bit of performance, get one frame here, just trying to be perfect. And what I realized is that game development, if you want to finish a project, sometimes you got to leave some of that stuff there. Any, any piece of code online from any AAA game is messy. A lot of people think that AAA games, like I used to think this too, that AAA games are like these perfect, beautiful works of technological art. They are messy as shit, okay? There's a lot of stuff that gets shipped that is just crazy. If you look at the original Doom source code, there's so many hacks and workarounds and like issues. And people on forums are always saying like, hey, he could have made so many changes to this. There's so many ways, better ways to do this. Yeah, maybe there was better ways to do it. Maybe there was faster ways to do it. Maybe there was a bunch of better things that he could have done with Doom source code, but he made Doom and he finished it and he launched it. So why are people suggesting that? Perfectionism is one of those things that you can do over and over, right? You can do it forever. So you have to stop yourself. You have to learn to go with good enough. You have to move at 80 or 90% and you have to just like let it exist, right? And that was a hard lesson for me to learn. Tip number eight, pick a deadline. So this is kind of similar to building a ship, but I think the difference is this is a very hard point in time when you will ship the game. Building the ship, I think is more of a mindset. Like I, I got to finish the game in my head and I know that I'm working towards that end product. Uh, deadline is the thing that forces you to get there. So a lot of people don't like to put deadlines on their work. They like to mess around and add stuff to their game and mess with stuff and 
it, it's like a hobby and it can be a hobby. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with hobby game development, but this is a video about finishing games. And if you want to finish games, you need a deadline. You can delay forever. You can keep making your game to eternity and like have fun with it. And if that's what you want to do, go for it. But if you want to finish a game, you need a deadline. We're not even going to go into the marketing benefits of a deadline and actually working up to that and doing all marketing because ob that's an obvious benefit of having a deadline and a launch day. Uh, but a deadline just for the fact of being able to finish and having to work towards that thing and having that to push you and pull you towards that time and make you work overtime and make you like, you know, bust your ass to kind of make that game get out there. I think that works really well. And for me, deadlines don't seem to work when I have them internally. They only seem to work when I announce them or I put them out on the internet. Other people know that those are my deadlines. So maybe that's something that'll work for you because announcing my deadlines definitely seems to make me work uh, a hell of a lot harder and faster. And I seem to get things done a lot quicker and finished when I actually push out a deadline. Doesn't mean you can't delay, right? It doesn't mean that like if the game's just not done, it's not done, you can delay it. But if you want to finish, I highly suggest that you pick a deadline. And tip number nine, be prepared for the last 10%. So there's a joke in the game development community that the last 10% is really the last 90%. And that's so true because especially if you haven't built a commercial game, even if you've finished a game before, but if you haven't built a commercial game or something like that, there are so many things that come out in the last 10% from like tying everything together, doing the menu screen, the UI, finalizing all the stuff, all the audio, making sure everything is in, doing all the control schemes and customization controls and localization. And that's just like in the game side, right? On the publishing side, there's all kinds of stuff that needs to be done. You have to set up assets. You have to do uh, your store pages. You have to mess around with the text. You have to be able to show screenshots and videos and trailers. And there's just so so much work packed in that last 10% that ironically, that's where a lot of people quit because it just gets so rough and there's so much to do in that last little chunk of time. And a lot of people get discouraged and they get overwhelmed by that. And I definitely did. That's where I would quit a lot of my games. I would get to the 90% the mark and I would just be like, eh. I did that with companies too. Like I would, I would build web, these web applications for like startup ideas that I had and I would, I would build them all the way out to like 90% and then I'd be like, eh, not so much. So being aware of just the pattern that I would quit at 90% was important, but also being aware of the workload that comes in and that final stretch is really, really important because if you're not prepared for it and it hits you you're going to be really overwhelmed, especially if you're already drained from working on the game for all that time and, and getting all that done. It can be really frustrating. It could be really overwhelming and you should definitely be prepared for that last 10%. So those are the tips I got for you. I hope you found them useful. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up down below and write me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you have a top tip for finishing games, let me know that down in the comments down below. And like I said, if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified because we post daily game development videos on this channel. I also have a free ebook, which I recommend you check out down in the description below. It has 67 tips similar to these uh, and it's completely free, so check that out. But once again, my name is Tim Russwick and I'll see you again tomorrow.